What's up, sons? It's Blindron with Sound of Tech once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the BIOS or UEFI settings for the MSI Z270 Pro A. And this is in particular for getting it set up for a multiple GPU mining rig. So we're talking about more than four GPUs, preferably somewhere around six to eight, depending on what devices you have or converters you have for maybe some M.2 slots. So stick around. start things off, it's going to be pretty simple, but just in case you aren't aware, to get into the BIOS or UEFI, you're going to want to either restart the computer if it's already on or turn it on if you haven't turned it on yet and start pressing the delete key on the keyboard. This will get you into the UEFI and then at that screen, you will probably be by default in easy mode. To change this at the top left, you'll actually see a little cue for it on the MSI board where it says advanced mode. You can either click that or press the hotkey F7 to get into the advanced mode. Once you're in there on the left hand side of the screen, there's going to be three options. We're going to be taking a look at the top option, which is going to be the settings. Don't worry about overclocks because all of the overclocking for the GPUs, etc., will be in the operating system itself with a tool called MSI Afterburner, and we'll go over that in a later video. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that portion. Once you're in there, you're going to want to go into the PCI subsystem settings, and there'll be three options in here. Every single option is going to need to be modified. The top one is going to be PEG0, max link speed, and you're going to want to change that to Gen 2, which seems to work pretty reliably for most devices that I've seen. Now, if you're troubleshooting some issues, possibly you might want to bump down to Gen 1. I do see that in some guides. However, Gen 2 has been fine for me personally. Now on the PCI latency timer, you're going to want to change the PCI bus clock. Now, what this is going to do is basically allow the GPU to have or take over the bus for a longer period of time, which will allow it to complete the calculation it needs. You can typically leave this at default, but if you're having issues where, let's say the GPU is failing in the miner, before, but, but that's happening after you've actually started the miner and you know it's working, then this could possibly be the setting you're looking for. Personally, I've turned it up to 96 PCI bus clock speed, and then that seems to take care of everything on my end, I haven't noticed any issues. Next is the above 4G memory cryptocurrency mining. So this one is specifically for cryptocurrency mining and is going to be the main setting on the MSI motherboards that you're going to want to enable. So make sure you click that and set it to enabled. Now for the MSI motherboard itself, I, I don't think you really need to change anything else as far as the devices go, but in some other motherboard applications, you're going to need to disable various settings. Sometimes that's going to be either your LAN device or some USB devices to allow the PCI lane to be taken by the graphics card. Now in that case, you will just easily go into the advanced integrated peripherals and turn off and on whatever you need. Refer to the motherboard manual for specifications or layouts in particular for your particular motherboard. Now, for the MSI motherboard, you don't need to disable anything. I have a few things disabled personally, but that doesn't need to be touched and can be all left at default. You could also turn off Thunderbolt and a few other various settings if you need to. The next setting that is kind of the most important is going to be the integrated graphics devices uh, configuration. And this is going to be your iGPU or the GPU that comes on the Pentium G4400 that we talked about in our hardware video, which you can check out up here. Now, the importance of this really is only when you're installing Windows. There are some funky applications or funky situations, I should say. There are some funky situations where you can have some issues with passing through the video when you're on risers. And sometimes it's better to just get a clean install of Windows on the motherboard and the equipment itself before adding in any sort of variables that could cause boot issues, etc with the graphics card. So I like to use the iGPU and enable it and then go ahead and go through all of my settings and etc and install windows that way. 
Finally, the last setting that you're going to want to make sure is turned on is going to be restore power on loss. It's actually under your advanced power management setup settings. So once you're in the power management setup settings, it's going to be in the second one down. It's going to be called restore after AC power loss. And you're going to want to set this to power on. What this will do is anytime you have a power loss, the board or system will power back on. So pretty straightforward there. The things to note here is that it can, or in my case, what I did is it pretty much after initial boot, I no longer have to have a power switch or trip it with a screwdriver to get it to boot up. I can just flip the switch on the power supplies and get it booted up that way. The importance of this, and we'll go over some more tweaks that you're going to want to do to your system uh, to prevent this as well is to prevent any downtime. So let's say you're out to dinner eating or you're playing some video games and not paying attention and your miner shuts down or you have a power loss at your house. Well, what will happen here is as soon as the power is restored, the system will come back up. And if you've configured your operating system right, which I will link the video here once it's complete, it's not out yet. It should come back up and boot into the operating system and start mining again without you having to do anything. The other thing you can do to prevent downtime for your miner as well as another backup is to pick up a UPS. I have one from Triplight and it's just a battery backup that keeps the system running for this one only about 45 minutes. So I do need a bigger battery backup, but that's enough time to where if you had a quick power down situation, you're still going to be up and mining without power coming into your house. Once you've completed adjusting all of the settings in your BIOS, make sure that you go ahead and save and exit and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe down below and let me know what you think of the video and let me know if you have any more questions about settings in the BIOS. Until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.